This is Congressman John Culberson. This is the first of many video blogs that I will post on my website. I don't type very fast, so I'm going to do my best to do these video blogs about two to three minutes apiece, at least twice a week, updating you on what the Congress is doing, what I'm working on as well, and um, to give you useful information that you may not pick up in the newspapers. I can tell you that this week the Congress is already in its 38th day of this legislative session, and yet we are this week naming post offices. The liberal leadership of the House has got us designating this month as Women's History Month. And instead of dealing with the most urgent financial problem the nation has faced since the Great Depression, we're naming post offices. Very frustrating, absolutely unacceptable, and intolerable that we are here after all these many weeks and still don't have a plan to deal with the liquidity crisis. We still don't have a plan from the White House or the Democrat leadership, which is totally in control now for the majority in the House and a much strong majority in the Senate. This is entirely the responsibility of the liberal leadership of Congress and the White House to give us a plan to deal with the banking crisis, to help rescue the banks from insolvency, to keep the uh, uh, keep credit flowing to small businesses and people that need to borrow money to operate a business or to make payroll or to uh, or to buy a car or to refinance a house. Uh, we are instead, in the 38th day of this 111th Congress, have been presented with a spending uh, plan from the White House that, that, that spends uh, more money than any budget in history, that proposes to drive up taxes on all of us by $1.5 trillion. Now, the last president to try to raise taxes during a recession was Herbert Hoover. And we all know what happened. That created, led to the Great Depression, the Hoot Smalley Act, the restrictions and tariffs on imports, is, which led to a trade war, coupled with the tax increases that Hoover signed into law, uh, led to the Great Depression. So I am doing all that I can to fight the budget, this massive spending binge that the new leadership in Congress is engaged in. In this 38-day period, the leadership of the Congress has spent more money in less time than any Congress in history. They have managed in 38 days, uh, President Obama and Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid have managed in 38 days to create more debt that we must all pay and our kids must pay. They've created more debt in these 38 days than was created in the entire history of the United States of America. They have spent over one and a half trillion dollars in only 38 legislative days. It's absolutely unprecedented and unheard of. This is a level of expansion of the size, power, and cost of the federal government that we've never seen before. We really, I think, are seeing for the first time that this new administration is following the European socialist model of rapidly and aggressively sh uh, grasping all the power they can, concentrating in the center of government, driving up taxes and regulations, and increasing taxes on every one of us. If you use electricity, if you use gasoline, if you use natural gas, if you use energy, you will be paying this $1.5 trillion tax increase. It's not just on people earning more than $250,000. This information will be up on my website. I'll be fighting this week to oppose this massive uh, spending increase, to fight these tax increases with thoughtful alternatives that will cut the budget, cut, will cut federal spending, uh, and, 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 and show the country that there really is a free market, fiscally conservative alternative to this spending and tax and spending binge that the Obama administration is engaged in. Uh, as our uh, conservative leadership is saying quite correctly, this budget spends too much, borrows too much, and taxes too much. And we'll be working hard as fiscal conservatives to show the country that we're ready to lead with thoughtful, fiscally conservative, free market-based alternatives that will let us keep more of our own money, which is the best way to strengthen the American economy at a time of recession. Uh, thanks so much for, for tuning in. That's about, I've already gone over my three-minute limit, and I'll uh, post again on this video blog later this week. And follow me on Twitter, uh, and quick, and I'll try to keep up a little better with my Facebook page. Thank you very much.